This is Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by Janet Wynn. She is a member of the California State Senate, representing significant portions of Orange County, as well as parts of Long Beach, and we are in your district right now. Yes. <laughs> and we are at Cal State Long Beach, and I wanted to speak with you about our university system. You're a graduate of UCI, and I want to get a sense from you about the debate about the number of slots that are being offered uh, in the UC system. What's your sense? Well, first, I, I do want to thank the university and the mm -hmm. region for um, having heard some of our calls, um, uh, quite some angry ones from the legislators, <laughs> right. uh, and have decided to, this coming next two years, right. would, would add in 10,000 more students. However, mm. in the last five years, we have decreased like 2% per year of accepting in-state students, meaning students who lives in California, mom and dad lives in California, uh, and have increased 26% to, to bring a student from outside of the state in. And I want to talk to you about that because it is a, an issue that has become a lightning rod. How many students should be accepted from other states? You look at other state systems, Virginia, Michigan, kind of similar strong institutions. They'll accept 30% out of state. In California, you break 10% and you know the eyes start to bulge out. I, I get that. I get the desire to take care of our own. What about the notion though, Senator, that there's something about geographic diversity uh, that can help the student body. You know, I I have no problem with that. The the thing is though is California university system is the best system yeah. in the United States. <laughs> it's not just any system. I mean, yeah. if you want to go out state, great. But we have the best system, and who pays for it? Our mom and dads, our grandparents, our taxpayer for all these years. Mm -hmm. That's what made it become such a great system. I mean, I went to UC Irvine. It's in the top ten yeah. for a bachelor's degree in yeah. the nation. Yeah. I'm proud of being an alum. However, now I'm fearful that my children would not have that opportunity because they would be, quite frankly, put on a on, on an area that's oh they're in-state students, right. so they're in a different slot. And if you, you think see? about schools like UCI, like yeah. UCLA, like Berkeley, like UCSD, like UCSB, these elite schools that everyone wants to attend, it can get more and more difficult to be admitted in or out of state. Now, as I understand it though, under the region system, the new batch of students, 5,000 plus 5,000, they must be um, from an in-state pool, which is a net plus. Uh, at the same time though, there is this question about financial aid. Yeah. Um, what is your sense about where financial aid dollars should be going? Should they be going to any admitted student or should financial aid be dedicated to those students that are uh, Californians by nature? Well, student financial aid are coming from taxpayer of California. So I hope that my money would go to the students in California. Hmm. Um, you know, and then, like I said, I, I look at like my children. They're, they have a long way to get there. Yes, back. they're younger. Uh, but I do also know a few, stu few students who, um, um, who my, my, some of my right. staff has of children who are actually go going and applying right. this year. Um, and they just actually finished their, uh, right. their application a couple of days ago. Right. They're applying five, ten schools, and they're spending a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars for these applications, where none of these responses they would even get. Mm. A financial aid should be for our students, okay, not outside state, because you know they want to come in. Hey, come in and pay right, for it. Right. Pay for our costs. If I mean, but at the end of the day, and that's what the debate. Oh, can, can, I mean, people mm. talk about is well, in-state student pays th twelve thousand, out-state mm. student pays twenty-six thousand. What about the mom and dad who mm -hmm. pays income taxes right. to the state of California budget, which then funds the UC system? Right. So that twelve thousand doesn't really, if you really think about think it, think about right. it. Right. We pay more than twenty-six thousand dollars per child. No, I hear you. Then there's the question of tuition increases. Mm -hmm. As you know, tuition had been going up very rapidly oh, yeah. over the last few years during the recession. I mean, I you know, in 2005, tuition for UC was $6,000. In 2010, it was $10,000. Now it's twelve, almost $13,000. And that doesn't include books and room and board and all of that. 
So we do have a freeze in place right now, but can we maintain that? Freeze. You know, the, the UC system I've noticed, at least in the last several years, has been is trying to get students from stop applying. But yet, on the other hand, we as legislators tell students, you have to apply to colleges, you have to get, mm, get a four-year degree, because right. that helps us, to, not only for yourself, but it helps us to compete globally. So on one hand, we're trying to stop students by increasing the fees, by not, a, not accepting them, but they're still at a rapid rate because right. we are 40 million people right. in California. Right. Um, tuition is very high. Um, I'm fearful that, you know, the very children that really, I mean, like it or not, the low-income children, um, some of the children, or even the middle class, when you increase the tuition, the middle class are the one that hurts the well, most. Well, think about it. I mean, it, it, with room and board, it could be $25,000, $30,000. Someone making a hundred thousand dollars a year—that's a very respectable living. Oh, I think that's what the legislature makes. We do. You know, that's a, we know, make a little less land, than that. Right. But you got per diems, <laughs> yeah. but be that as fair it may. Enough, but fair that's enough. That's a very respectable living. It is. But if all of a sudden you have to swipe off twenty-five thousand dollars, you know, and that's pre-tax. I mean, yeah. that's not easily done. It's not, and that's the problem: is students are coming out with a mortgage right after college. And you know this better than I do. Those mortgages are preventing students from buying homes. Yeah. And that depresses the housing market. Right. And so it becomes this vicious cycle. Second though, Please. not only that it's, they're not preventing them from buying a home, they're leaving the state. Mm -hmm. So when you have st students who are coming from the best medical schools right. in the country, and we, what's the, what's the problem with the healthcare system? We need providers, mm -hmm. we need medical professionals you know what, they're leaving the state. Once they get their residency, they're gone. Right. They're better off going to a place where they can buy a mansion for right. $100,000. <laughs> right. Yet then, in, even in my district, in part of my district, you're lucky if you can get a townhouse for half a million dollars. That's true. And you then, have Orange County, Northern yeah, Orange County. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and so that's where is we are hurting our own future the future of the state to be mm. able to be competitive and to be the best of what we've always done. And what's interesting on this issue is that Democrats and Republicans and the governor are pretty united. We are. A, a kind of against the regents, against the yeah. chancellor. Yeah. And so it's nice to see that you know unity of purpose. But are we at a place now, you remember, I think before you uh, t joined the legislature, mm -hmm. I mean, the governor and the chancellor were really at loggerheads. Yeah. I mean, it was epic. Uh, are we at a place now where the volume has been turned down, the temperature's turned down, and we can all come together and address these issues as it relates to UCCSU. You know, I, my, my concern is that it, it, it might, the volume might increase mm. when, if they don't continue. Right. So um, I put in for this last year as a two-year bill, SCA-4, right. Right. which will, because, uh, which will prohibit the universe from increased tuition fee for five years, right. so freeze it. But is that is that um, realistic? You know what, it is, it is. I believe it is because mm. you gotta encourage the best. Mm -hmm. um, and then second is Please. limit limit the out-of-state tuition, we I mean out-of-state student to 10% right. like right. we talked about. Mm -hmm. Third is um, prohibit the state from funding out-of-state students. <laughs> Financial we also talk. right. And, and, but what the problem you have is that the universal regions are its own right. constitutional entity. The legislature, we can scream all we want, <laughs> the only thing we have the power is the budget. And we have been threatened this year. Right. It's like, oh, do you want to not give us right. an increase in our budget? Sure, we'll decrease this. Right. And we're like, wow. It is <laughs> it, a stunning. It, it is, it's, I mean, I, I didn't think the reaction would have been that way. I would have thought, okay, let's talk about increasing. She will be back. Her name is <laughs> Janet Wynn. She is a member of the California State Senate. My name is Brad Palmer. Thank you so much for joining us on Charter. <laughs>